10 years into the future, can Swansea replicate the success that we have built for them? Find out today in the final episode of Saving Swans, and I mean it this time, this is the final one, and the final episode on this channel of Football Manager 2018. What's going on guys? My name is Adam, I am a Super Swan, and welcome to episode 125 of the Saving Swan series. We are at the year 2037. We have gone 10 years in the future. How have Swansea got on? What happened to the players that were in our team? Tune in today to find out. So as you can see, I am unemployed, I have not touched the game for 10 years, so let's have a look and see how our team got on. So we're going to start by looking at the Swansea City team and see what's happening in 10 years time. So we got, oh, so Aradori's still at the club. He's the captain. Ross Pugh is there as well. So two familiar names we can see. Although they did finish seventh in the Premier League last time out with Jack Ross in charge. We'll have a look at the managers in a second. But we're going to look at the team. They've kept the same formation. 4-3-1-2. So they seem to have stuck with a winning formula that we put in place 10 years ago. So looking at the senior squad, are there names we recognise? Milagres is still in goal 10 years later. At the age of 36, Milagres is still there. He has been at the club for 10 years plus now. Look, he, he never left. He's been the first choice goalkeeper ever since... And he has been an absolute beast. He only can see 16 goals in the 32-33 season. 25 clean sheets. Probably his best season ever at a 7.45 for a goalkeeper. He is still there. And how much do we bring him in for? 12.5 mil. So we signed him in 22-23. He has been a goalkeeper for almost 15 years. He's been in that goal Bargain at 12 and a half mil. Shelby Johnson still at the club, 33 years old. He is wanted by a few teams. Did I see something else there? Yes, yeah, oh, he is leaving on a free transfer. So this is his last year before moving on. And again, he has been a rock at the back since joining the club. So he's been with us for since the 21-22 season. He's been there himself for 15 years. It'll be his 15th season at the club. I know we loaned him out in the first season, but he's been there a while as well. And he's been first choice ever since. In fact, I think that was probably, the, yeah, that was the season we left where we started rotating. And since then, he has been first choice up until the very last season. So it'll be interesting to see what happened to Trent because he was rotated in at right back. So it'll be interesting to see where Shelby Johnson got up to. Oh, sorry, Trent Alexander-Arnold got up to in that time. 428 appearances for Shelby Johnson. So we got Bermudez. I don't recognise him. Ross Pugh is in the team at 33. The man from our youth academy stuck with the club. And our last season was there. 21 appearances. He's only got 19 the season after, but he's been in and out of the team. Pretty well, since he's been first choice, hasn't he? He's always been in the team. I'm just trying to see when his best season was. I think it was the season he had with us. Yeah, the 26-27 season. That was the best season he had. And it's been downhill since then, but he has remained at the club. Does he have staff attributes? No, he doesn't. I'll check that for Milagres as well. Nope, doesn't have staff attributes. So, Ross Pugh's still at the club. Elliot Lambert, we don't recognise. Galvez is still at the club. 31 years old. He just established himself as a first-team player when we were at the club. He's got some pretty good stats from what I can see there. If we look at career stats. So yeah, he just broke into the first team that season. And he's pretty much gone on to be a superstar at Swansea there. 13 goals in the 34-35 season. 12 goals in the later season, 36-37. For £5 million. An absolute steal. So Galvez still bossing the midfield. Along with Zaquinia. Zaquinia is still there as well, 34 years old, 83 caps for Brazil. We brought him in, he had zero caps. So he's had 83 caps over the course of 10 years, 313 appearances, 
for Zaquinia. And again, that was the season we had the last season, which was a 7.05. Hasn't really hit those heights since we left. Although we had 10 assists in the season just gone. How has he only had a 6.99 if he's had 10 assists in the league? But Zaquinia still at the club, 34 years old, so he's winding down his career. Still at, so we got the core of the team at the back is still there, which is good. Although I don't recognize any of these players, but we know our Dory still at the club, 34 years old, still at the club, 201 goals in 417 Swansea City appearances. He is the captain at the club, I think he was captain when we left. So that was the season we left 21 goals. Again, he didn't really get hit 21 goals ever again. He did come close there, though, and, and there. 19 goals, 18 goals. But a striker that's been there for 10 years. So they have had to buy a goalkeeper, a right-back, a centre-back, two centre midfields. So it's a goalie, right-back, centre-back, two centre midfields, a striker. So six players have been there for 10 years plus. So the core of the team has still been there. And Aradori has stayed at the club. A world-class player. Only 45 goals for Italy, though. So could have done better there. But what a legend he has been. Anybody else I recognise? Cardales is still at the club. The left-back that was starting to get in. A rotator with Nart. He's still there. So... He only had so twenty, so he had eighteen appearances that season, but he had twenty-four. So what happened to Luke Nart? And yeah, he has been first choice since twenty-eight, twenty-nine. He has been first choice. So what happened to Luke Nart? Did we sell him on? I mean, he had a good season. A, a common theme here is that they've had their best seasons in the last season we had, and it's all been downhill since then. But still, I mean, just about a 7.0 average, I would say, from left back. So Cardano is still at the club. And that's pretty much it. That's the only players I recognise. So there's about seven players at the club. Let's check the under-23s, make sure that there's nobody rotten in there. Uh, no, I can't see anybody in there. We're not going to know anybody from the under-18s. So there's a few notable absences. Giragori... Nathan Evans, De Luca. What's happened to those players? So we'll have a look at the transfers. We'll see if we can try and track what happened. So 26-27. So that was the last season we had. So because we sold Diego. So we'll go through the transfers of each season. Now we're not going to know the ins. So we're going to focus on the outs. Wow. So whoever came in went on a proper spending spree. 189 mil in and 233 out. De Luca went to Marseille. He left us on the 1st of July. He's now a director of football. He didn't leave anybody else bar Marseille. But Fabio De Luca still in the game. He left us for 96 million pounds. And he was banging in the goals for Marseille. I think we must have been using him wrong. Because, I mean, look at that. 12 goals and 12 goals in his first two seasons. We were obviously using him wrong. Because that was an outstanding season for Fabio De Luca. That he must have been banging in long shots for fun in France. But look at that. 96 million. Went to Marseille. He's now a director of football. Uh, he's not a very good... He's, he's an alright director of football. But he's looking for a job, is Fabio De Luca. He could be a manager. He's an okay manager, but... Fabio De Luca left the club. Pineda left the club to go to Napoli. He's now retired. We're going to see a lot of retirements today. So Pineda retired after going to Napoli. Went to Brazil as well. So Pineda retired as a player. Who else went out? Benito. So he was a young striker we had. I don't think we really featured him much. Target went to West Brom for 2.6 mil. He retired. We did load him up to Brighton in the last year. Went to Hull before he retired. Who else is there? Jonathan for 29 mil. So I don't know if you guys remember this guy. But he was a player we bought. And he never really got game time. We kept loading him out to be an attacking mid. But he seemed to have a very good career after we sold him. 
So we sold him to... Who do we stand? Was it Sporting? Yeah, Sporting for 29 mil. Made a good profit on him. Made 209 appearances, 99 goals. And now he plays for Liverpool at the age of 34. And now he's Portuguese. He was Spanish when we bought him. So we had a good profit on him. So we've had a bunch of loan sign-ins. Timo Horn went to Shakhtar for 2.4 mil. He's now a goalkeeping coach. He's an okay goalkeeping coach. I'd bring him in. Yeah, I, I'd bring him in if I was still the Swansea manager. Uh, so what else? No way, Jose! He's lost his no way! But we sold him to Juventus for £58 million. And he retired at Juventus. No! So we sold De Luca, Pineda, No Way Jose. So they must have had a change in formation. We're going to look at the managers afterwards, but we'll look at the players first. So we're not going to look at the frequent. We're not going to know about the players coming in. Marco Rog left on a free to Valencia. Went to Lazio and Rostov. Luke Nart went to Monaco for £95 million. Look at that. So we did sell him on to Monaco and he looked like he retired at Monaco. So our best player was just being sold off for high amounts and he didn't he never dipped below and a 7.2. He never dipped below that. So Luke not we cashed on. So that makes sense to Cardanes being the left back going forward. But we did cash in on Luke Nort to Monaco. Anybody else who left? No, not really. So we've maintained a lot of players over that season. A lot of outs in the 29-30 season. And that is the big one. Giragori went to Real Madrid for £103 million. And now he plays for Bournemouth. He's come back to England, Giragori. He's 34 years old. He has come back to England. So how did his Real Madrid career get on? So... We kept him for two seasons, where he scored 20 goals and 22 goals. He was a starter. So instead of rotating, he played every single game. And he had his best rating. At, well, no, we had a 7.69 there. But th th we did sell him on to Real Madrid. where I'd, Well, he constantly got over 15 goals, well, apart from that season. But 23 goals, 12 assists for Girigori in the 33-34 season. So he must have let his contract expire after not getting many games after getting old in the Real Madrid team. And he's come back to Bournemouth where he hasn't been that good. I think age has caught up to Girigori. But 34 years old and Girigori is still at the highest level in the Premier League. Although not as good as he was. He is on the transfer list now at Bournemouth for 850k. What a steal that is. 77 goals in 116 games. And he did get relegated with Bournemouth. So that might be the reason why that Girigori is on the transfer list. Because they want to get him off the wage budget. He is on 71k for a 34-year-old. Which I would say is quite a lot for a team like Bournemouth. So Girigori did leave the club after two seasons. Hudson I don't recognise. Pospisil we brought him in as a youngster. Carlos Leiva. So he was the Arthur replacement. We sold him on to Hamburg, I believe it was. Yeah. We sold him on for 19.5 mil. Became a starter for Hamburg. And then PSG bought him in for 45 mil. And hardly played him. Did he develop into a good player? 16 marking, 13 heading. Uh, he's alright. But 31, he might have been better when he was younger. He's alright. So I don't think he turned out as good as we thought he was going to be. But we sold him on. Mario Gomez went to Man United for 26 mil. He's back in Portugal now with Porto. The team we bought him off. So he's gone full circle. He's back to the team that we bought him from. So we bought him for 37 and a half mil. He was more of a rotation play for us more than anything. But he did come in and did, we did sell him on to United for 26 mil. So we brought a little bit of money back in for him. Didn't like the league up really. But he has gone back home to Porto. Back to the club we bought him off. Anybody else we recognise leaving? Castro, did we bring him in? I think he was one of the youth players we brought in. Yeah, he was. So we signed it. No, was it? 
I don't think this is one of ours. Well, either way, we'll have a look at him. So if we bought him in for 500k, I think, no, I think we did bring him in. So we silked him onto Pumas, so we must have thought that ah, he's not any good. End up going off to China, now Chelsea have brought him in. So he did end up being a pretty good player. A Uruguayan international. I'm not sure, we'll have to check. I'm, I think I brought him in. So we go ahead now to the 30-31 season. Cabrera went to Spurs. So he's now gone to Spurs. Still in the game for Cabrera. He's got some staff attributes. He wants to be an assistant manager. Or a coach. Give him time. He might be better. But we did sell him on to Spurs. For 34.5 mil. How did he get on there? So we left here. So we kept him for three years. Again, had game time. He did start in the league for half the games. But I think we cashed in on him whilst... I mean, we only had eight appearances in the last season. So I think we cashed in on him while we could. Stayed at Spurs for a good five seasons. Was a starter for them. 32-30. Was a bit of a rotation towards the end. And now plays for Sassuolo. So we sold Cabrera. So we are now starting to get the old people out and get the new people in. Let's have a look who else we got. Ivan Menezes, we didn't sign him. Phil Jones? I don't think that's the Phil Jones that uh, plays for United. But Trent Alexander-Arnold went to Spurs as well. And now he's a manager. So let's have a look at Trent. So we sold him on. So after this season here, um, Shelby Johnson got the starting position. But Trent was still getting games. So maybe we were playing him in a different position. But we did sell him on to Spurs for 28.5 mil. Uh, did okay before retiring at Aston Villa and now he's a manager 38 years old he's looking for his first job in management is Trent and nobody else save for that so we're 31 32 now so I think this is five years later and the more we go on the more we're not going to see our players so I'm looking through the names here nobody stands out Matt Linares who's the American international we brought in in our last season to try and give the team some youth in there. So we loaned him out to Ajax in the last... No, we loaned him out to Feyenoord in the last season we were there. No, Dusseldorf, 26-27. So they loaned him out to Feyenoord, then Ajax. Then they kept him on. He did get a starting place in the team. 16 appearances and 20 appearances. So he did develop into a player. Then we sold him to Inter Milan for 34.5 mil. If we look at his stats, 31 years old, he looks like a bit of a beast. He's got amazing mentals, really good physicals. 16 tackling, 13 heading. Could also play right back and hold in midfield. He does look like a little bit of a beast. So, we, so our scouts did well to find him in America. That's pretty much it from that year. 32-33. I'm looking through. Nick Thomas, our goalkeeper. The one we were keeping an eye on. 30 years old. Playing for Crystal Palace. So we were loaning him out and he was getting really good experience. I remember he had five-star potential. I don't think he hit his potential. Because he didn't really play any games for us whatsoever. Sold him to Palace in the Championship. And now he's, he is a Premier League starter now. He is a Premier League starter for Palace. Conceded quite a number of goals. But he is a starter. And he does look to be the Welsh number one as well. So he's done alright. He's, he's forged a decent career for himself at Crystal Palace. And he has won the FA Cup. So, he's done all right. As Nick Thomas. Boning left for West Brom for 20 mil. So, we did keep on to Boning for a long time after we left. We sold on to West Brom for 20 million pounds. He has now retired. But we did get a lot of game time out of him. Oh, we haven't got his history. But he stayed at West Brom for a good five seasons. So, he's only recently retired in the 37 season. So we've just missed out on seeing Bonin's career. So we keep on going. Alan Kelly, the Irish player we brought in. Did he get games for us? He's, a, he's with 52 mil now at Liverpool. So what did we do with him? So we loaned him out, loaned him out, loaned him out. And then we, he had some games for us in 31-32. Sold him to Brighton for 11.25 mil. And then Liverpool bought him a year later for 28 and a half. 
And now he's with 52 mil. And again, a bit of a beast at centre-back. We sold Zachary Paul to Arsenal. So we finally got rid of Zachary Paul. He's still at Arsenal at the age of 36 years old. He wants to be a director of football. He's, he looks all right as a director of football because he's only got a national B licence. But we did cash in on Zachary Paul. So we left here. So he was a first team player. Still got games on rotation from the looks of it. He was still a first team player. Right up until we sold him for 37.5 mil. So we must have been cashing in on him while we could. And he's still a first team player for Arsenal. At the age of 36 years old. So a player that we got in for 2.8 million pounds. We sold for 37.5 mil. What a profit we turned on him. So Zachary Paul did leave the club in the 33 season. Looking through anybody else? No, I don't recognise anyone there. I still haven't seen Nathan Evans. So I'm still looking through. Alta Bormer left. 7.5 mil in the 35 season to Shakhtar Donetsk. Let's have a look at him. He's 32 now. How did he get on? So he left in this season here. The man... That was rejected by Bayern Munich, who scored in the Champions League final. And he stayed with us for a while. Although the last couple of seasons, he didn't really get first-team football. And now he's in Shakhtar Donetsk. And he's scoring for fun for the looks of it over there. 19 goals he scored in his second season. So Altabama left the club for Shakhtar. Escobar was a player we, I believe we brought in. Yeah, we brought him in here. So again, with him... Linares and the one we got from Uruguay. We brought in players to stack the team. And we kept him on, kept him on, kept him on. Didn't really get much games, but PSG spent £95 million on him. He is a left-back, and he's a very good left-back. And my dad, a very good left-back. No wonder PSG wanted to spend £95 mil on him. So I would imagine it had been between himself and Cardanes for left-back. So we were pretty stacked at the back throughout this career from the players that we brought in. So nobody else there. Again, still haven't seen Nathan Evans. So we, we know he's left because he's not in the team. So I'm looking at the outs here. Nobody I recognise. So in the last season, who left? Nobody there. So no Nathan Evans. We must have been released. From the club. So if we check the released players, we'll have a look. See if we see anybody we know. Still not coming up. There he is. So we released him in the 33 season. Is he still in the game? He plays for West Brom, does Nathan Evans. He's 32 years old. How did he get on? So this is the guy that scored at 17 or 16 in the Champions League. This was the last season. We played him 16 times in the league. Only played 9 games and 10 games in the league after that. But he was still a 7 point average rating. So this must have been the year that Girogori left. Because he was getting a lot more game time for us. Only 8 goals, 9 goals, 5 goals. He wasn't the most prolific in the league. But I'm just looking at the bottom here. And he was getting over 15 goals a season in all competitions. So we released him on a free transfer, had two good years with West Brom, and they just haven't played him. So if we look at his attributes, ah, uh, see, that'll be why his pace has dropped off a bit. The only thing about Nathan Evans was is that he was a very pacey player. He, and if he lost his pace, I don't think he had much with him. He was very much similar to Michael Owen back in the day, but he had 41 goals and 88 caps for Wales. So he did good at international level. So that's what happened to Nathan Evans. Anybody else released? Yomar! There's another player that was released. What happened to Yomar? He plays for Atletico Madrid now. So we left on this season. So he's very much a... Uh, well, he was a first-team player. Right up until the later season. So we thought... I'm not sure why we released him. He was always scoring goals for us. Even in the last year, we had 24 games in the league, scored 8 goals, but we released him on a free to Atletico Madrid. And how did he get on there? Well, he was, he was a bench player 
for them, really. He lost a bit of pace, but he was always a good target, man. So Yomar went to Spain for his last season, and he's only recently released. So that's what's happened to our players. Now, how has Swansea City got on? So if we check the Premier League, we know they finished 7th. They finished below Cardiff in the later season. So we're going to have a look. So we go back to the... So this was the Invincible Centurion season. So this was the last season we had in the league with Swansea. Let's see how they got on. So the following season, they won the league. 93 points. So they did lose five games there. So the unbeaten run did come to an end. They've, so they've won the league twice since we left. So they retained it. A good chunk ahead of Man United and Man City. So, oh, they lost the league there, though. So they lost the league. They finished fourth that season. So Man City won the league there. So they did drop to fourth. But they're still Champions League. Came back to seconds. They couldn't reclaim their Premier League trophy. Still second in the 31-32 season. But they did come back to win the league in the 33 season. So that's three league titles they've won since we left. They didn't retain it. So they come third that season. But they did bounce back. Oh, I, I'm lost. Hang on. So they won it in the 33 season. But they did bounce back to win it in the 34-35 season. So that's four league titles they've won there. Came third. Man City beat our record. 101 points for Manchester City. So they have broken our record of 100 points. And the late this season, they came seventh. So they didn't even get... They didn't even get Europa League football. But, oh, look at this. West Brom and Aston Villa had exactly the same amount of points. West Brom have been randomly chosen over Aston Villa after both team teams finished on 40 points with the same record. So, yeah, both scored 43 goals, both conceded 55 goals. You don't see that very often. So they won the league four times, I believe, since we left. Yeah, eight times in total. So what other trophies did they win? So look at the competition. So they won the Champions League three more times after the 2026 season. 30, 31 and 34. But they've been in the final a lot. So they've been in, what, six finals in 10 years? So in 28, 30, 31... 33, 34, and 36. So they've been in the Champions League final a lot. But they have a 50-50 record because they've won four and lost four. But they did win the Club World Championship each time they did win the Premier League, which is to be expected. They haven't won any more FA Cups, though. So only the four that we've won. They've won the Super Cup as well, 31, 34. They've already still won one Europa League since then. They've won a few Carabao Cups. So they won the Carabao Cup 29 and in 32. Came runners-up in the 34 season. They've won a lot more Community Shields than we were in. But they still have runner-up in six and only won five. So we still cannot win the Carabao Cup. But yeah, that looks to be our, our trophy horse. So they have maintained the success. But they haven't been as dominant as they should have been. So we're going to have a look at the managers now. So we're going to see who has been in charge of Swansea since we left. So we were in the job for nine years and 156 days. So we won four leagues and ten cups. So Zinedine Zidane came in for as our replacement. So Zinedine Zidane, he won a Community Shield, a Premier League, an FA Cup. So we won two leagues and four cups. So he so had a good... He got a good run in charge of Swansea. He did leave, though, so where did he go? He went to Dortmund after us. Went back to Juventus, and now he's the manager of Arsenal. So Zinedine Zidane, he's forged a pretty good managerial career for himself. So he replaced him with Leonardo Jardim. He, again, lasted two years and three days. A not very long tenures for our managers. So he won a Community Shield. He didn't win the league. But he did win two Champions Leagues while at the club. So that's probably what kept him in the job. Where did he go after Swansea? He went to Barcelona 
from Swansea, and now he's in charge of AS Monaco, where he was in charge of before. So he's gone full circle, just like Zidane did. He went back to Juventus, and Jardim went back to Monaco. So he replaced him with Nuno Espirito Santo. He was the Monaco manager, and now he's gone to PSG again, a club where he had been manager. So Nuno went from us to PSG, and what did he win? He won a Super Cup, a Club World Championship, Carabao Cup, and a Premier League. So he did win the league whilst with Swansea. We replaced him with Marcello Gallardo. Where did he come from? So we got him in from Leverkusen, who has gone on to manage Barcelona. So they always seem, the big clubs seem to rotate, like Monaco, Barca, Swansea, PSG, Juventus. They all tend to have the same sort of managers. But Gallardo went to Barcelona from us. He won the Community Shield. He won a Champions League. If I go back here, if I, no, I don't want to go in there. So we won the Super Cup with him, the Club World Championship, and the Premier League. So a good haul of trophies from Marcello Gallardo. John Gray, he was our under-18s manager. He was only a temporary position. And Jack Ross, a relative unknown, an unknown manager, he came from Arsenal, and he started the game as St. Mirren manager. So he has forged a very good career for himself in the game. So if you're watching this, Jack Ross, you are in for a fun time as a manager. Went from Kilmarnock to Rangers to Arsenal. That's a big step up from Ars to Rangers to Arsenal. And now he's the Swansea City manager. Although he did finish seventh in the league. And he hasn't won any trophies. So he's gonna his back's going to be against the wall as far as a managerial comes up. But yeah, that is Swansea City in 10 seasons time. So a lot of the players have moved on. Some of them have stayed. But the success does look to have maintained with three Champions League trophies, four Premier Leagues, three Club World Championships, three, no, two Super Cups, and a lot of other trophies to go with. So Swansea City are now one of the best teams in the world, attracting the best players to come in. And we have saved Swansea City. And that, my friends will bring a close to the Saving Swan series. I know I said the last episode was the last one, but we did want to have a look at them in 10 years' time just to see how they got on. If there's anything you want to see in this save, drop me a comment, and I'll be sure to do a follow-up video this week of things that you want to see. So if you want to see like who won the Premier League, who won the Champions League, let me know in the comments, and I will sure to, to do maybe a follow-up and see what those things are. And yeah, so I think we can safely say the Swansea City have been saved and this is the last episode of saving swans and a football manager 2018 we have gone 125 episodes i'm very proud of the series and i'm very proud of what we've done as well so i think this is a good way to close the series leave a like if you enjoyed guys comment down below if you've watched any of the episodes of the series and let me know what your best moment of the saving swan series was if you've watched one episode, two episodes, 125 episodes, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. I will hopefully look forward to seeing you in Football Manager 2019. Thank you very much for watching.